Colin, obviously we spoke about um, when you got captured in, in Iraq. Um, is there a sort of vision that, that you've got there as, a, as like either the scariest moment for, for what you had to go through in, in that? Yeah, I think a lot of people say when you were captured, I take it the point where you were having those mock executions, that was the scariest. And bizarrely, for me it wasn't. For me the scariest part was when order broke down. So while somebody was in charge and he was telling people what to do, ironically, I felt safer. When they started fighting between themselves and it was a mob mentality, that's when I felt most vulnerable because it was kind of all bets are off. I could be kind of torn limb from limb. So they were kind of, they had no, they had no order and they, were, they, they could decide what, what to do really, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely, yeah, and that's, that's mm. when I felt the most vulnerable. That's the, probably the point I was most scared at that point. And these mock ex executions, did they have a gun to your head and did they pull the actual trigger when, when they did them? Yeah, so at that, at that point I'd be naked, blindfolded, handcuffed against the wall. My compadre was in the room opposite, I could hear what was going on there. And then every now and again they would just press the trigger. Um, and I think the first time I would assume that it was, the, the weapon was faulty. After it happened a few times I kind of clicked it. on it. was. What what physical feeling did you get and like what, what thoughts ran through your head when, when that happened? You, you almost force yourself to think about things that you think you should be thinking about, so family and the person next door. And for me, um, I always thought about the guy I was with because I was the commander on that mission and I was responsible for the guy on the other side. So even though I was you know, scared about my own life, I was always conscious there was, a, there was a guy next door and I was responsible for him and that was always at the forefront of my mind. And so we got to a point and Ian turned to me and said, you know, we need to get over this ditch. I said, mate, I'm right behind you, you know, you just let me know. And he walked a bit further and stopped. And the last thing I remember seeing was, he kind of just looked at me and said, right, we'll go here. And I said, steadied myself next to him and kind of went to go and jump over this ditch. And it doesn't, um, I obviously didn't do this at the time, but when I try and think back, I always remember just feeling really tense, like hearing two huge bangs. He just kind of tensed up. And what had happened is he jumped over this ditch and in between the two trees he hit a tripwire. He's jumped, hit this tripwire, two bombs went off in between us, blowing him forward and blowing me back. The blast actually kind of blew him away 30, 40 metres. So he didn't end up as bad as me. I mean, he had a nasty bang to his head, broke his femur, broke his elbow. And I was chunks missing out on the left-hand side of them. But for me, the kind of shrapnel just hit me from all angles. And I just fell back straight away and I just started screaming as loud as I could. You know, I knew straight away I'd been blown up. And I knew it was pitch black, so I didn't know whether I'd fell into the ditch or whether I'd been blown hundreds of metres away. And I guess I was just screaming, you know, for the lads on the ground to know where I was so that they could hopefully save me. And... Um, yeah, in, in that one split second, I suffered 27 separate injuries and shrapnel to my face, broken elbow, broken sternum, severed my femoral artery, chunk out my left leg, you know, broke, broke both lower legs, severe nerve damage to both hands and both feet. And I actually lost the ability to have kids as well. I, um, I got told I'd never be able to have kids. Militia fighters had been shot in the leg but had played dead. And one of our boys didn't check his pulse, so it's a fault, you know, it's an after action review on, on our skills because we didn't carry out the, the body checks that we should do with, with checking the pulse. And we, we missed that one, but he was loaded on as dead. But this fucker's alive. We never knew that. So D shapes in there, hand cranking his door open. Next thing you know, this militia fighter sits up bolt right in the back when it's dark. <laughs> He's then screaming, so I'm, he I'm hearing this commotion in the back. I said, d what are you up to talking to the dead? Anyway, I've looked <laughs> talking to the dead. <laughs> Fuck it I've off. looked in there and he's got out and he's sprinted off down this road, sprinting, shouting, he's alive, he's alive. I thought, he's alive. I've looked in the back, no word of lie. This militia fire sat at bolt right and gave me the nod. Like, it's like as if say, all right, mate. And I was like, "Get me out! What is going on here? Get yeah. out!" So then we had to. I pulled him out. The medic kind of started administrating first aid and 
is sorting his you know his gunshot wound out. He was then processed as a as a prisoner of war and and taken away for question. But I just couldn't believe. It. I thought this day is not, like like. And I had my dinner one night and one of the lads radioed and just said like, gas, gas, you need to get up to the bridge now. Uh, there's boats coming in. So I like ran up 15 flights of stairs, belly full of food. And when I got there, I was like completely like knackered. I looked through binoculars and you could see these speed boats coming in, like cutting us off from port side. And I just knew straight away what, what, what it were about and I was like, like hyperventilating and like, oh God. you know, like that fight or flight, you know, like if you've ever been out in a club and somebody st starts off, you've, you don't want to fight. It was like that, I wanted to run away. And I, more started coming in from port and starboard side and I just, I just thought we had to surrender. I just thought the only way we're gonna reserve any kind of percentage of life that we've got here is to surrender, but it was really a rational kind of way of thinking because I knew that it was a, p a position where we, we, we couldn't we couldn't negotiate an, an, an unnegotiable negotiable situation and I was, I, it was the only point I think in my life where I thought I'm going to die and I just didn't want to die and having that realisation that I was going to die for a number of minutes was just like absolutely horrific and as they came in, there were a young lad that were laid across the boat like he was uh, on a deck chair on holiday, like it was just a, another another thing. And we fired warning shots into water when they got within 300 metres, because that were our kind of rules of escalation and engagement. And this guy didn't even flinch. I was looking through binoculars. This young lad, he didn't even move. And then they we just we just started engage. Well, they started engaging. We started engaging and. Over like 35 minutes, we fought off like 50, 60 pirates, four of us. Can you talk a little bit about any moments in that, any, any, sort, of, any sort of missions that you got put on that, that you feel were a little bit spiky too? Uh, yeah, there was, I mean, the one, the one with the ditch was pretty, that was pretty gnarly. We sat on the back, you know, flying into flying into somewhere and you sort of like sat on the back of the helicopter and about you're six minutes out from being somewhere and then the, the, you're just getting like the sky just erupts into a massive fireworks display and you like mm. you literally can feel the helicopter getting hit you can see the one behind getting hit or it looks like it's getting hit you can, and then you're like that oh my god what have we what have we what have we bitten off here because I think it's a little bit more than I can chew do you feel do you feel lucky you feel lucky, like yeah, yeah. yeah you definitely feel lucky because it is it is a numbers game to a certain degree. Mm. There's a, you know I've got mates of you know, mates that have died and mates that have been really badly injured and so on. So I think there's an element of luck there, definitely. 